YouTube, what's happening? It is Monday, July 8th. You can see it's a short day. There's only seven games to talk about in baseball today. Drop a like, subscribe, and share with someone you know because yesterday we had ourselves a day, didn't we? We hit a money line parlay. We hit a bunch of bets, 13 and six for 10 units. First double digit unit day in a while around here. Made up for the day before we lost like six units. So overall, great weekend, I would say. For the last seven days, still up 10 units total somehow. Uh, last 30 days up 30 units and for the season we have just crossed the 83 unit mark the slow and steady climb to the peak is still happening doing great around here it's a short day there's only half a schedule to talk about but it's a new series around so we'll take those for some of these games so drop a like subscribe share with someone you know and let's go ahead and jump to that first game right now all right first game today is for some reason a super early day game on a monday new york and pittsburgh weird Anyways, we got the Pirates as a slight favorite, as you can see. The over-under is set at eight and a half. That seems to be the best number out there. Looking over at the bats, we see that the Nerfy has been hitting about 54% based on what they've done this year. For the stats, Pittsburgh has a slight advantage in the bats. Mets 3.3 runs versus Pittsburgh 6 and 255 versus 283 batting average. So Pittsburgh has a pretty decent advantage in the runs, but not so much in the batting average, but they still have some of an advantage. And strikeouts, nine versus 7.7, .7, not much to really look at. So just alone right here, Mets are kind of cold. Pittsburgh's kind of kind of hot. They're top 10 in the both average and runs. So I would probably lay off the nerfy, but we will look at the pitchers too, to be sure. Pitchers, we have Christian Scott going out there for the Mets, 432 with a 114. You can see what he's done this year. Uh, he pitched once against Washington, has not faced Pittsburgh. 5 1 against Tampa, 6 3 against Atlanta, 7 4 against Miami, 2 and 2, 4 2, 6 4. So you see he gives up runs. We see that. He, he's, he's good for one thing, and that's definitely giving up at least two to three runs a game. His counterpart is Mitch Keller, 3 4 8, 1 2 5. Uh, you can see his stats here. Has not faced the Mets. 5-1, a 7-0 gem against Minnesota, 8-4, 2-0 gem against the Reds. So, yeah, clear advantage pitching goes to pitching goes to Pittsburgh. That's hard to say. You can see outside his one game here where he kind of got roughed up a little bit, 9 for 5. He still got – he has games where he has gems. He doesn't just give it runs every single game. So, with the total being 8 and a half, I don't – not with these offenses being where they are, nothing's really – I don't, I don't know if the Mets can help with that total. So I'm going to pass on the total. On the side, I lean Pittsburgh because of the fact that the bats are better and the fact that Mitch Keller is obviously better. So looking back at the odds, we see that you can get Pittsburgh. The best number out there right now is a minus 112. So yeah, I will be taking Pittsburgh on the money line on this one. We'll do that for sure. Now we need to look over at some props and see if anything is standing out. So we'll start with Christian Scott first. Earn runs nothing there strikeouts mm, four and a half no hits no nothing in walks nothing and pitcher outs is the thing a lot of people want to see talked about so i can talk about some outs outs are hard though because it's such it's always depending on like a one in difference if they do it or not so you can see his number 17 and a half and he's right there so we're gonna pass on that one so let's pop over to keller see who we have here uh refresh make sure keller is loaded um here we go there we go got killer so earn runs we want let's go 2024 for the whole year so he's done his number two and a half um if anything i might lean under in that but mm. strikeouts he's right there it's it's up and down nothing standing out for the strikeouts for the hits he gives up hits that's the thing i noticed he gives up a good bit of hits but the Mets are kind of cold, so I'm not going to touch that. It has to be against a team that bats are hot. Like Christian Scott, his hits against Pittsburgh will make more sense, but it's five and a half. I don't want to go that many hits. If it was four and a half, sure, but five and a half, I'm a layoff. So walks. He does walk a good many people. That's a little interesting. So and then outs. See his see his outs. See he you can see what he does. It, yeah, he's right. Pitching outs are hard. I don't know why they're getting popular. It's becoming a very popular thing, especially on Twitter. I'm seeing a lot of these people put out pitching outs, and it's like, yeah, 17 and a half. Okay, is he gonna pitch all innings? I don't know. So for me, I'm gonna keep it simple. You know, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. We're just gonna take Pittsburgh on the money line. We're going to take nothing else in this game and just move on to the next one. All right, before we jump to the next one, if you're wondering what this software system I'm using, it, it's Outlier. I've been part with them for a little over a week now. They are amazing. You can see all the numbers on the data. I want something that can give out stats, and this 
software setup is amazing. So you can tons of stats or props because I could not build a prop model. I tried, I failed, Outlier helped out, they're awesome. I'd rather use them to try to do it myself because I have to pay people to do it. I'm not that good. So there's a link in the description, you can check it out. It's a free trial, just go do the free trial. Trust me, you'll love it. So let's get back to the games. We have St. Louis and Washington going on right now for the next game. This one's at 4.05 Eastern. I'm in Eastern time zone, so it shows up as. You can see the either side's favorite. It's basically a pick them. You got long, you got good juice either way. Uh, total is nine and a half though. You, let's pop over to the bats to see what we got. Nerfy sixty four point four based on what's happened this year so far with these two teams. The bats you, there's a lot of single digits on this list. Seven runs a game for St. Louis in their last three for fifth. Washington seven point seven for four. So we got two high scoring run teams. 311 batting for St. Louis for fourth. 345 for Washington for third. Both teams are batting over three hundred. And strikeout seven versus eight point three. Neither team striking out much. So what we have is the Nerfies highlighted because anything over sixty is going to get highlighted. Anything over seventy is going to be green. So you can see I I'm not taking a Nerfie when you got two teams with bats this hot. I just can't do it regardless of who the pitchers are. So now the pitchers are absolute garbage. Then we might have a look at a Nerfie. So hey, because these two teams are hot. So let's pop over to the pitchers. First we got old Mitchell Parker, three six one with a one one zero. You can see. Five and five, six two, six four, six one, four zero, oh, three two, four three. You can see what he's done. Um, his numbers are, I mean, these are decent numbers. They're not bad. His worst game was his last game, but it was the Mets, and the Mets have been on fire. This is a grimace era. Oh my goodness! So he's trying to face. Now he's facing another hot offense. Who? <laughs> I don't know. It's going to work for you, buddy. Let's see what his counterpart is. Mikulas, 5-1-9. Mr. Mustache himself, 1-2. 5-2 against Pitt. 12-10-9 against Cincy. Ooh, terrible. 6-4, 4-1. 1-0 gem against Pittsburgh. So, hasn't faced Washington. 5-2. and two. So, he's up and down. Just, we'll call it. We'll be nice to say up and down because you have a game like that. You bounce back with this. Parker's worst game was this, I mean, and maybe this. I, you got pitchers that can probably give up two, three runs a piece. Sure. Mm -mm. Against these bats, I want to lean higher and the higher end of that. The odds, I believe, were nine and a half with some juice on the under in this one. Against these offenses with these pitchers? I don't know. I'd, I'd have to lean it over. If it was eight and a half, I'm definitely taking it. But nine and a half is a little juicy. Might not. I might not be able to do that one. Let's look at some props. Let's start with Parker. You can see earned run over two and a half is actually favored. They're favoring to get at least three against these bats. What wouldn't be the worst thing? Strikeouts, four and a half. Uh, we can see that neither team is really striking out right now. Going back, yes, yeah, six plays for St. Louis at seven. Washington, 8.3 for 11th. Yeah, we're not taking any strikeout props. Not today. Can't do it. So looking at hits, hits might be ooh, five and a half. He doesn't give up many hits. That's the thing about him. He might give up some runs. Three, 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 four. But that was against Detroit. That was against Atlanta. It was kind of cold. Miami, Tampa Bay. The Mets got him for five. Colorado got him for there. Yeah, walks. No. And pitching outs. Hey, pitching outs is so weird. So narrow margins. I don't know why it's getting popular. Earned runs might be a thing. Let's see what Mikulas is up to. His hits is six and a half, and outside this 12-er game, oh, go back, go back. Yeah, let me refresh this real quick. Make sure I got the right stats. His earned runs are there, he has hits. Yeah, his hits are six and a half. They expect him to get some hits today because normally he is way under. He's going to get a hot off. If this was a normal offense, like an average offense, I would take his under here because he just hits it so often. But they think he's giving up his because he's facing a top five offense right now. So pass on that. Walks, no. Put outs. Look at this number. Look at this. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 17 and a half. You're facing a hot offense, though. I don't know. See? If it was a cold offense, I or the I need to look more in the bullpen to see like how much of the bullpen was used yesterday and the day before. Little things like that before I can dig deeper into the put out world. So now. Earn runs is two and a half for him. Uh, you know, this one's a tough one. I'm going to be honest. This one's a little toughy. I think, based on the odds, nine and a half. We have two pitches to give up runs. We have two 
teams that the bats are fairly hot right now. They're averaging 14.7 combined between them. They're both batting over 300. I'm not going to take any props. I think I'm just going to take the over in this one. We're going to take over nine and a half. The odds are nine and a half. I believe, let me see if we can mess around with these odds a little bit. Let's pop into the odds. Nine and a half. Let's get an alt line of nine. Let's see what nine looks like. Over nine, you can get for straight even money. Here we go. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take over nine in this one for minus 110. That's the best way to do it. I don't care about the plus juice. I want that push possibility just in case. A 4-4 game, I guarantee a push at least. Because 4-4, you got to score. That puts you at nine. So, yeah, we'll take over nine in this one. Move on to the next game. All right, next up, we got Cleveland and Detroit. You can see that Cleveland is a pretty decent favorite on the road. Total is eight and a half out there. Looking over at the bat side, we see that the Nerf is 54.4 based on what's happening this season, where they're at. Stat-wise, they're pretty equal. Four versus five on the, on the runs a game. That's 18th and 14th. 293 for six batting for Cleveland. Meanwhile, 286 for ninth for Detroit. They're basically, they're only seven points apart. 6.3 versus nine. Detroit does strike out a little bit more. Just a little bit. So that's not a bad thing to look at. But you can see the trend lines where they're going. Everything, they're about the same. I don't really see much of a difference in the bats. Let's see if the pitchers have anything different. For Cleveland, we have Gavin Williams. Only faced the White Sox. Seven and five against the White Sox. And that was last week. Uh, last Wednesday when he faced him. Only 74 pitches. Didn't last long. Didn't give up any home runs, though. That's something to say. So not the best start. And it was against the White Sox. We know that's not the best team to face. So... Hey, and Montero over here has he faced last, he went against the Twins last week, six one for six and two, and then against the Phillies, five high five, and then back in May against Pittsburgh, five four four. So we have the dude who is going to give up runs. It looks like against somebody who's brand new. So we know nothing about the pitchers. Neither one of these dudes inspire confidence either way for me. I have no clue on the pitchers in this one. We already know that the bats are equal virtually i don't see nothing there so i don't see how these books have cleveland such a big favorite because nothing's standing out for me so so far i can't take a side because i don't know much about the pitchers and the bats are equal can't take a total because the bats are the equal and the pitchers we don't know nothing about them I can't take a nerfy because I, these pitchers give too many runs. I <laughs> just can't do it there. I can't even do props in this one because the, we don't know enough about the pitchers. Because when you your pitchers are only giving up, they have only been three times since May and one time total, you can't do props on that because then you're just guessing. You're literally going to be gambling at this point which way is going to happen. It's like red and black on roulette. You don't know which one's going to land on. So it's a 50-50 almost. So this one, this entire game is just going to be a pass and we'll move on to the next one. Our next game, a game with actual pitchers, Rockies and Reds. You can see that Cincinnati is a pretty hefty favorite at home. Uh, total is nine and a half out there. Let's pop over to the odds and the bets. We see Nervy 55.8 based on what they've done this year. So far, probably not we're talking about, especially with these pitchers. Maybe we'll see. Bats, actually, actually, we might talk about. It. I just realized how poor these bats are. <laughs> Runs a game last three, two point seven for both these teams. That's twenty seventh in the majors. Trend uh, batting average, Colorado two thirty nine for eighteenth. Meanwhile, since he is twenty eighth at one seventy five. So, yeah, the bats are cold. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Strikeouts, uh, Colorado is fifteenth at nine. Since he is dead last there, there's only thirty teams in the majors. And they got a 30 spot next to them because they struck out 13 times a game average in the last three. They're not, they took Seattle spots. Oh, the Mariners aren't going to like that one. And you can see, yeah, the bats are cold. Let's see if the pitches are good. If the pitches are decent, we might be rocking a nerfy today. So Andrew Abbott's going out first. 328 with a 120. Has not, oh, well, yes, face Colorado. I apologize. 7 3 and 3 back on June 3rd. This was at Colorado in. Pretty good game. Not bad. It's in Colorado too. Not bad. Five and one against the Cubs. Four and three against Milwaukee. Four and two against Boston. Two and two against St. Louis. And three and one against the at the time the ice cold Yankees. So he's gonna give up a couple home uh, not home runs a couple. Oh hit. Yeah, he might give up a couple home runs. So you can see he's gonna give up a couple of runs. Probably is what we expect. Felton on the other hand, a five six with a one four six. Nerfy ain't looking good, guys. I'll tell you right now, ten and eight against Cincy. 
Yep. Yeah. Mm -mm. Can't do it. Yeah, you're facing the same team again that you got blown up by. You got blown up by the Dodgers, 7-4 against Pittsburgh, 2 nothing against St. Louis. That's impressive. 6-2 and two against Houston, 6-1 and one against Milwaukee, but you got 10-8. and eight. You got 10-8 over here against Cincinnati at home. Now you're on the road. I just, yeah, Nerfie's out the window, and these pitchers are, oh, yeah. Ter yeah, ooh. I see why Cincinnati's favored, but both these offenses, you can see, are just not that good. So I can't really take a side because both pitchers are, uh, both bats are, even Colorado has a slight advantage in the bats, let's be honest, because they're batting 239, which is, what, 75 points higher than since he's at 175? Yeah, no, pass on that. So we're not, we're going to pass on a Nerfie. We're going to pass on a side on the total. What was the total again? Let's take a look-see. Nine and a half. Might be able to get a nine out there. Hmm. Hmm. With these pitchers, but no, no, these offenses. That's that's the dilemma. We got poor offenses and poor pitching. You mix them together. It's like, okay, which one's gonna give up give up the ground? So we're gonna pass on that too. Let's pop over some props. Maybe we got some good stuff there. So prop time. Let's start with Cincy first by Abbott. Earn runs. Uh over two and a half. What is yeah, let's look at Feltner's earn runs. That's all I want to see. Earn run Feltner. He had two good games. Now he's facing. Oof. He's, <laughs> walks are there, strikeouts. He's not a strikeout dude. Hits. No, he does give us some hits. Five, but since his bats are cold, it's hard. It's hard. It's so hard when both sides are bad. Oof. It's like football. You get the offense that can't score against the defense that lets everybody score. Which one's going to do things? It's so hard to pick these games. So yeah, it, it, it's it's almost impossible to decide what to do in this one. So for me, I, again, I'm just gonna pass completely on this game and move on to the next one. All right, next up we have Minnesota and the White Sox. You can see that Minnesota's a pretty heavy favorite out there. Uh, over under is at nine and a half currently. Let's look over at the bats. We see that the Nerfy 62.1 based on what they've done this year. Not bad. It's highlighted. We will look at that. And then we see the bats and we see the twins are playing. And then we immediately change our mind on the Nerfy because twins are number one at eight runs a game in their last three. They're number one in batting average as a team in their last three games. They're batting 385. They bet at 344 yesterday, 345 for the course of the week. They bet in over 300 for the past two weeks. This is how on fire the, the twins bats have been. They're only striking out 8.3 times for 11. White Sox. 3.3 runs for 22nd, 243 for 17th, 10 runs a game for 24. So, yeah, Minnesota has a clear advantage here. So, let's look at the pitchers and see if there's anything that stands out here. So, let's start with Flexen for Chicago, 508, 139. We know Flex is pitching, that's a fact. He has uh, not faced Minnesota, 3 1, 2 2, 9 and 4, 5 and 1, 6 and 4, 6 and 3. He's not bad. He's average i would say nothing really stands out about him he doesn't really have bad games outside of six and four but uh, that's nine hits that's a lot of hits to give up so now the probables have paddock as a starter today espn has not updated this but outlier has so if outlier has it, i'm gonna rock with it so we're gonna assume paddock starts today barring some kind of last second change so five two nine with a one four three he is coming off the uh, the injury list so he has not pitched since June 21st. So he had he was on the 15 dayer. So he is back. So we, it's curious to see how he does. Um, he has not faced the White Sox. Five and three against Oakland. Five and five against Oakland. Gem against Colorado. Six and seven against New York. Five and four. Four and two. Three and two. You can see he gives up. He, he's good for probably three ish runs. And now he gets to face. The, the White Sox offense that is middle of the road. 3.3 is 22nd, 243, 17, middle of the road offense. The main thing is flexing. Flexing, what can you do to stop this Twins offense? Because I don't know if you can, to be honest. So anything he's done, I expect him to have a season high and everything today because you are facing Minnesota. They are on fire. It, if they've been on fire for two straight weeks, I don't expect them to just drop to nothing today. So, I mean, it could happen. I mean, it's baseball. It's weird, but who knows? So if anything... The odds are Minnesota is a pretty heavy favorite. Hell, the run line's almost good enough for this one because, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to take Minnesota 180, but Twins at basically 110-ish range, 113-ish range, not bad. Especially since we know the bats are on fire, the pitchers are there, flexing's going up. I expect flexing to get pretty, ta pretty tagged in this one. Paddock is coming back new, so he might get tagged a little by the White Sox. So the over might be a play, nine and a half. Hmm, because he does get runs. You know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to do the over. Let's pop over here and see. Can we? What, what's a nine look like? Let's look at that. Let's see what that nine alt line looks like. Over nine, you can get minus 120. I like that. I like the push option just in case. I like that push. So four four gets you a push at least for a chance to win. I'm, I'm going to take that because you can get that. Caesars has it. Nice. Okay. A lot of the offshore books tend to mimic Caesars and MGM mainly. They're trying to do a lot of FanDuel recently, I've noticed, but a lot of them like to go with the older ones, so they do that. So, yeah, if you can get 120 anywhere here, you can get it offshore. Guaranteed. Easily. So, yeah, we're going to go over nine in this one. Let's look at some props, though, just in case. See if anything stands out funny. So, props-wise, let's look at Paddock first since we... Uh, Let's look at Flex. We know Flex is starting. So, earn runs, three and a half, plus 120. They expect them to stay under that. I don't know if I want to take that. I mean, the Twins are on fire, but ugh. I'm not touching strikeouts with the Twins, not against the Twins. Hits, I might touch. Five and a half against Minnesota might be fun. Let me look at his innings. Like, how often do, do they pull him? That's a question we need to look at, too. Let's look at Flexen. Six innings, 5.26, 3.15, 5 and 5. Ooh, I don't like that. He gets kind of pulled sometimes. That 9, 6, 4, soon. Only he got pulled at 75 innings. I mean, 75 pitches. Ooh, but he did go 106 here in a 6 4 game. Oh, I don't know if I can do props. I don't know if I can do it. Mmm, walks. Mmm, mm mm. -mm. And pitching outs is just I gotta dig deeper in these. So okay. And then I don't want to do paddock because we don't know officially if he's starting or not. So we'll leave that alone. So all we're gonna take in this one, we're gonna take that over of nine here. Over of nine because you can get minus one twenty-ish, maybe even cheaper on offshore ones. So we'll take over nine, leave everything else alone, and move to the next game. All right, next up, we got Texas and Los Angeles, the Angels. You can see that the Rangers are a moderate, moderate favorite on the road. Uh, total is eight and a half currently. Let's look at the bats. You can see that Nerfy 48.1 based on what they've done this year. Uh, with these teams and pitchers, maybe. Texas is a little hot right now. They're 6.7 for six in runs. Meanwhile, they're batting 356 for second in the last three games. They are on fire. 8.7 strikeouts for 14th, middle of the road. Angels, quite opposite. 2.7 runs for 27th while batting 173 for 29th. But they are first in strikeouts. They're not striking out, 4.3. So you have Angels who are ice cold. They're not striking out, though. The Rangers, who are pretty hot, second in average, six in runs in their last three. You can see they've been they've been hot the past two weeks in the batting average range. So Texas has the advantage of the bats clearly here. Let's see. Um, and they are favored, right? Yeah, they're favored by 140 is the best number out there. Pitchers, let's look over. Remember last time Davis Daniel pitched, everyone on Twitter was taking his strikeout prop. It was hilarious. Like everyone was taking it because he had one game ever and he pitched in four innings against Detroit and struck out. Everyone took his over strikeouts and then he pitched, came back with a three spot. So, <laughs> so either way, he's seven and four against Oakland of all teams. A gem against Detroit. I give him that. That's a gem. Gray is going out there. Gray, we actually have stats for 7 3 against San Diego, 9 and 8, 11 and 9. Gray has been up and down the definition of a roller coaster. He hills and valleys with him. So we don't know what we're getting with him. We got a pitcher who we don't know really much. We got he's new, and we got a total of eight and a half out there against a team that's really hot in Texas. Mmm. I don't like that, to be honest. The bats are hot. Do I trust John Gray is the main question, because do I trust this? Because this is, he's facing Texas. I'm sorry, he's facing the Angels. He hasn't faced them yet, but New York got him. Baltimore got him. San Diego for three. Eh. Outside of that, gem, gem, gem. Was these games on the road? Let's see. He was at home for this one and on the road, so that doesn't matter. 
Oh, so, and then 2.13365, he even four, he's not even pitching many innings, so it's kind of, it's hard to judge him. So we're not going to do his props. There's nothing we can do a props with him that I would like. Daniel's only done two games, so we can't do any props with Daniel. I need more than two games. I need at least like three or four, maybe even five to get some props. Nice little trend line stuff. So we're going to skip on the props. Nerfy, I can't do it with these pitchers. I mean, we don't know what he can do. We know what well, we see we can do. And John Gray, we see him blow up twice in the past two, three weeks. So mm, I can't. You can take a nervy. I can't do that. So the bats are hot. The angels are not. Ooh, I don't trust the pitchers. This is one of those games that gives me just a, ugh, just a ugh feeling. Just mm, make me feel like I need to go take some like Pepto or something just to wash it down better. So, ugh. so I'm just going to pass on this one. Nothing looks good. No, we're going to pass and move on to the next game. And last game of the day, we have the Braves and the Diamondbacks. We have the Braves minus 185, pretty heavy favorite on the road. Over under is eight currently. Looking at the bats, we see 50.3 nerfy based on what they've done. Arizona likes to score at home. You can see they're only 60% nerfy, which means they're 40% yerfy for the season. So that's interesting. Um, 5.7 runs a game for ninth for Atlanta. Meanwhile, Arizona's eighth for tied for first with uh, Minnesota. 232 for Atlanta for for 20th. Meanwhile, Arizona's 295 for fifth. So advantages from the bats go to Arizona all day in this one. 11 strikeouts for Atlanta versus nine strikeouts for Arizona. That's 26 and 15th. Yeah, Arizona's got the big advantage of the bats. Let's see what the pitchers are doing. So for Atlanta, we know who we got. We got Chris Sale. We know what we get with Chris Sale. Outside of his blow up against Oakland, five and two, five and two, one, four and one. Three and one, dude's a beast. He's gonna strike out a ton of dudes, but he's facing Arizona, who, as we just saw, they're middle of the road strikeouts. So we should look at some Chris Sale strikeout props. You know what? Let's go ahead and bounce on over to that outlier. Show yourself. There we go. Chris Sale strikeouts. What do we see? Six and a half, and some heavy juice. But guess what? I have a total of three best today. So <laughs> I want some action. So we're going over 6.5 K for sale just because I want to. I like it. I know the bats are hot, but you still swing and miss sometimes. And dude, his, look at this. He's hit the over nine out of 10 times. The only one was Oakland. And that was his worst game. Probably it was career. That was so bad. So hits. I don't see him doing anything there. Earn runs. No, not with the, how hot uh, Arizona's bats are. Yeah, we'll just go strike out. He can give up runs and hits. I don't care. As long as he strikes dudes out, as long as he hits seven strikeouts, dude, I am cool. I am Gucci. I don't care. So that's good there. That's the odds. We see why Atlanta's favorite. Eight is a good total because sales pitching and because you see the bats. Arizona, it's, it's the strength of Arizona's bats versus the strength of Atlanta's pitching because the opposite sides. Ooh, buddy. The coldness of Atlanta's offense versus the pitching prowess of whoever the hell this is. ESPN don't know. They ain't even got a picture for the dude. You know the dude's going to be good when ESPN has a picture for him. He has a pitching game. Like Paul Skeens, he had a picture. A couple other dudes, they had pictures. This guy doesn't have one. He has a big A. He has no information. He, he doesn't even have any news available. There's nothing about him. Does he exist? Is he a real person? We don't know. They might have a ghost throwing pitches today. We don't know. So I don't have props on him. Clearly, I don't have stats on him. I know nothing about him. So I, it, around here, if it's your first start, which clearly is what it looks like, we like to fade those people. But when the bats are this damn cold for Atlanta, can I really fade him? Because, hell, he might come out here and, you know, pitch a, you know, five inning jump because Atlanta's bats are so cold. I can't do it. I hate, I hate not fading new people, especially with Atlanta. It has it gotten in our mind that Atlanta's is beast team, but the stats are just not making sense. They're 49 and 39. They, they, this feels like they should be like 60 and 20, but they, they're just not doing that well. So mm, I digress. Arizona's got the offense. Atlanta's got the pitching. They cancel out. We're not taking a side. We're not taking a total. Only thing we're going to take in this one is we're going to take Chris Sale to hit that over six and a half K prop. And we're just going to call it a day. It's a short day. One, two, three, four, four bets all day. That's all we got. That's it. Okay, that's it. That's all seven games broken down. I know there was some passes. We, we passed three out of the seven games because it's just some tomfoolery out there today. It's a weird day. It's a travel day. It's one of those like, uh, let's let's just get through the day. There are some games. There are some plays out there. I took them. Um, again, 
Outlier has been awesome. As you saw, all the props powered by them. They showed it. There's a link in the description. Go check it out. It is free to try. It's a free trial. Seven days. Go check it out. Play with it. It's awesome. That's how I got hooked. I did a free trial. It's great. So you can see this, what we have here. It's only seven games. Let's do a quick recap for the recap, people. I mean, this is going to be quick. Hope you're ready. So New York and Pittsburgh, early, early, early game. We're going to say Pittsburgh on the money line. St. Louis and Washington. We're just going to take the over of nine. The, uh, Cleveland, Detroit, pass. We don't too many too much questions about the pitchers there. Colorado and Cincy, pass. Poor versus poor. But I just nobody wins in that game. Minnesota and the White Sox. We're going to take the over of nine and hope that the White Sox are able to help out with that total a little bit because I think Minnesota should be fine. But I just don't want to, I don't want to trust the, the Minnesota money line. It was very heavy, very heavy. So just over nine. Texas and LA, we're going to pass completely. Too many questions with the pitching in that one. In Atlanta, Arizona, we have a new pitcher for Arizona, and Atlanta's offense is ugh. So we're, all we're going to do is take the over of six and a half strikeouts for Chris Sale. That's it. That's four plays. That's a Pittsburgh money line, an over nine, an over nine, and six, over six and a half strikeouts. Four plays total. Ooh, so... You know, add to the total slow and steady what we can do because yesterday we hit 10 units yesterday trying to keep up the trend. So drop a like, subscribe, share with somebody, share with somebody who's paying for picks. Let them. We got, we're going to try to stop this whole paying for picks epidemic going on because I see too much of it going on, especially on Twitter. So too many free places of information out there. Let's fix that. Don't pay for picks. So also in the comments, let me know if you're taking any of this garbage today. Because there is some trash out there. Let me know what you're taking today. Because I only have four plays. I would love to follow some plays today. I'll even put that in the comments. Let me know what you're playing today. And we will see you tomorrow. Peace.